This is a quick video demonstrating how to operate the touchscreen on a SICK W10 sensor. What you're going to notice is that it's mainly icon based. There's not a lot of words on the screen. So it uh, makes it more of a, a universal type sensor. But uh, as you can see on the main screen, it's giving you uh, at the top, it's giving you a distance value. So if I change that distance from the sensor, you, you can see it, see it start to work down as I get closer and, and works back out. Um, as I get further away. So this is a, this is the actual distance measurement. If you want to get this distance measurement out of the sensor, you have to use it over IO link. So there's no analog version available for this sensor. So that distance value can only be sent over IO link. So at the top is that distance value, uh, right down below it in small font, uh, it shows 127 millimeters. That is the sensing distance that I set for my first output. Um, and then it shows an unlock. So the screen is unlocked. Uh, you're also going to notice four arrows. There's one at the top and bottom and then one on each side. If you want to navigate to one of, one of the different screens, so if there's an arrow to the left, I want to navigate to that window on the left, I swipe towards the arrow. So if I do that right now, it's going to show an icon of a factory. So it's kind of a universal icon saying, if you want to factory reset it, yes or no. So I'm going to hit the check and now I'm at factory reset. You can see the, the default switching point change to 200 millimeters. So now I can work through, uh, actually let's go to the right. So if I go to the right side, swipe to the right, you see this lock unlock. Now I can unlock the screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit check. So now the screen is locked. Uh, so now I can't really do anything except for swipe right again, and then it gives me a password. To unlock it, there's a one or a two. It's really simple to unlock using the screen. I just hit one. So basically the, the functionality for the to unlock and lock the screen, um, just using the screen is really simple. It's really easy to, to defeat. If you wanted to lock the screen out to where no one can change anything and they can't unlock it using the touch screen, you can do that, but only over eye link. So the next thing I'll do is uh, I can swipe up or down and it's really just three screens from here. Um, there's one that shows mode and then output type. I swipe again, there's a teach, there's a settings. I swipe again and then you're back at the, at the home screen. So if I start here with the mode, there are three different modes. There's a speed mode, a standard mode, and a precision mode. And based on what's listed in the manual and on the website, the depending on which mode I select, um, the sensing range of the sensor is affected. The, ma the maximum sensing range is affected, so keep that in mind. Uh, and also note, if you're in a screen and, and you, don't, you haven't touched anything in a while, uh, it will go back to the main screen. So you won't get stuck in any of these screens for extended period of time. So if I just click this, I'll click precision mode, easy to change it to a different mode. Down below it is the arrow, and this is, uh, you can configure your two different outputs. So if I wanted to configure Q1, uh, there's light on or dark on, there's PNP, MPN, or push pull, depending on which type of output you need, and that's it. You can do the same thing for Q2. The only problem with this is you can't, you can set with the touch screen, you can set the sensing distance uh, and the switching output for Q1, but you cannot do that for Q2. The only, the only way you can set a sensing range for Q2 is over IO link. So that's uh, in the second video, you can, you can see how you can do that. So now I'll move down and, and do a quick teach. Actually, before I do that, now I wanna go back I can either wait until it resets or there's an arrow to the left. So I'll just switch, back, switch to back, um, hit the settings, and now I can change it from background suppression or foreground suppression. So I'll just click background suppression and then do a teach. There is a one point teach, a two point teach, and a manual mode. So manual mode, I can come and say, I know my, I want my output to be set at 150 or whatever it is. So I can, I can change that. Uh, I did it a little too quickly. Let's go back in there. Let's go to manual. Um, I'll just click and hold. If I click and hold, it goes a little bit faster and then I can do it millimeter by millimeter. Once I have the desired distance, I click 
the plus the uh, play sign, and I'm done. And now my output is caught in at 241 millimeters. Or I can come in and do a teach single point, and I can put a target in the way. I'll just put a sensor that I have sitting here. Hit the play. And you can see the icon is background suppression and I wanna see the present or I wanna see the target. So now you can see the, the output, the amber LED on top will come on when that, if I put it in there right, uh, will come on when the target is placed. Um, also note that it is a wheel, so now I can swipe up and I'll go straight to that window. So I'll click teach in again and do a two point teach. And for this one, I'm going to do, uh, have it set to a shiny on a shiny background. And I'm going to do about a one millimeter thick shiny washer. So it's the icon is showing me that I need the target in place first. So I'm going to teach it to the target. Gives me a check. Now I want to teach it to the background. So I move the target out of the way and just show the background. And what the two point teaching is doing is it's taken the distance that it, that it's showing for the target and the distance for the background and basically putting the output directly in the middle of those two distances. So that would be 88 millimeters. So the output's off when it sees the background, I move the washer in front and the output's on. So that is a really tough application for a photo eye. Um, and it's really easy for the W10. So, and then the only other thing, well, that's it. So we, we've run through all the options of this. The only thing that I didn't really show is the foreground suppression. So I'll change that to foreground supp suppression. Do a teach in and there's only a single point teach for foreground suppression because you're going to be teaching it a background. Um, yeah, so the icon showing foreground suppression and you want to teach it to the background. So I'm going to teach it to the shiny background. Gives me a check and I'm done. And you can see the amber LED is on. And I move the target in place, that amber LED turns off. So just another way to do this simple application, but if you need foreground suppression, that's how you would set it up for that. So that's pretty much all there is to it for this. Uh, I will be making another video showing the setup over SOPUS, which is IO-Link communication. Um, let us know if you have any questions.